No more money for nothing. Why people want to know more for each dollar they donate to charity and risking it all to help others. The increasing threat to aid workers in the world's conflict zones. I'm Martin Stanford. This is Insight. Welcome to Insight. Conflict, famine and natural disasters prompt people all around the world to give up their hard-earned cash to help others on the other side of the planet. But increasingly, people want to know more about where each dollar goes and how much of it makes its way to those most in need. Insight Yasmin Khatun Diwan reports. Working for a better world. At sea, in camps, in war zones, and extreme conditions. Aid organizations provide much required efforts throughout the world. But there have been increasing concerns over how these organizations are spending our money. For every dollar donated, how much of that is actually going to those who need it? Despite collecting nearly half a billion dollars to provide relief after the 2010 Haiti earthquake, the American Red Cross was widely criticized for building only six permanent homes. Research indicates that trust and confidence in charities has fallen to the lowest recorded level. That's according to the UK's regulatory body, the Charity Commission. This disconnect with larger organizations has led to individuals delivering the aid themselves. Convoys like these ones here made their way from the UK to Syria. The lack of trust from the public has been fueled by revelations of poor funding practice, inappropriate data sharing, and a lack of transparency over how the money is being spent. How much does the everyday person know about where their money is going? We're here in the streets of London to find out. When you donate to a charity, do you think about where it's going? Uh, no. I'm always very careful about where the money goes and which charity and everything. You have to do a bit of research. You can't just blindly donate to any, any charity because you don't know exactly where it's going to go. You can only go by the facts that they have on the website or what they say, but in actuality, I guess you never really know the money could, could be going anywhere. One interesting fact that I found about that all 50% of the money that's given to African causes is spent in this country talking about African causes, not actually going to the actual country where I thought it was going to. Bond is the UK membership body for organisations working in international development with an aim to improve a variety of issues, including transparency. The big worry for a donor, and I'm sure all of us have done it at one time or another, is whether their money is really going to make a difference. So we look at organisations' websites and make sure that they actually tell people, like the donor, what would happen to their money if they gave it to that organisation. Are we heading in the right direction when it comes to transparency? I think we are. I think what's been a good result of what is a bad thing in principle, which is a decline in public trust uh, in, in all sorts of areas, but particularly in context of aid that we're discussing, the good thing that's resulted is it's made us up our game in terms of being more open and transparent and, and revealing exactly what we're up to. If you see that your peers are doing something there, you want to be sure you keep up with them. Uh, so definitely, I would say it's top of their agenda. That doesn't mean there isn't more to do. Representing the virtue of self-sacrifice and care, charities operate to give the donations of others to those who need it. But if they want to continue to receive these donations, charities must become clearer on how they are using this money and delivering their supporters' message. Yasmin Khatun Diwan, reporting. For insight. Well, to discuss that further, I'm joined by the UK director for the global charity Islamic Relief. That's Imran Madden. Um, Imran Madden, how transparent are you in your organisation of what you tell people in the public sphere, potential donors, as to what you do with their money? 
Well, I think we do that on a number of levels in, in different ways. I mean, first of all, um, we are very clear when we make an appeal. It's called the ask. And there are lots of in, dis, internal discussions about how we phrase that and, and, and is that clear to the donor what we're doing with their money. So I think if we get it right from the very beginning, if you get that ask as, as clear and, and as transparent as possible, in other words, we're raising money for this cause, this particular response, mm -hmm. and these are the sorts of programs that we are funding, we have to make that very clear to the donor. Um, one, one, of course, then the middle bit is spending the money. I mean, to ensure that, that the money that we raise for a particular appeal is spent on those programs that we detailed in the ask to but the I donor. suppose the other issues are about simple things like head office costs and whether your office in you know a capital city or something uses expensive carpets or you know paying their staff too much money all these things are valuable but let's gloss over that to get into the nitty-gritty of actually getting you've got an appeal at the moment to working in Yemen fair dues there's a great deal of need in Yemen but it would be naive of me wouldn't it if I give you a hundred dollars I don't expect all hundred dollars to end up at some poor soul in Yemen because you've got to transport the aid there, you've got to come up with a sensible policy. You may even have to bribe an official to let your boat uh, dock at the local port. Isn't that a problem I should expect to happen? Well, I think you're, you've highlighted that it's very complex. It's a very, it's a very complex and very challenging business. Um, I, I would underline that, yes, I think um, it costs money to, to deliver aid. I mean, some of those are in the kind of transportation, uh, they're in salaries. Um, but what we do as an agency is that we have a constant eye on the, the deliverables. I mean, how much of that is actually going to the people in need on, on the ground? Um, I, I, would, I would reassure um, donors that, that you know, part of that, you know, 10, 15 percent, 20 percent, it varies from, from uh, situation to situation, but NGO to NGO, that, you know, some of that money is, for example, spent on monitoring and evaluation. So there are people in the field who are ensuring that the trucks are delivered with the right amount of aid. Right. They're ticking those off and they're checking them. They're checking the bills. They're making sure that when we went to market, if that is possible, it's not always possible to buy in a local market, but if, if it is possible, that we're ensuring that there isn't sort of price fixing, uh, that we've got sort of three quotes, etc. Now, I would, I would suggest... Really? Is, to, is that level of detail gone into? Well, Even if, in an emergency situation where you just got to get there and get stuff and help people right away? If it's, if it's possible, I mean, there, it depends on the situation. If we know, for example, that we're planning over three months, yeah. that we know that the displaced people in a particular area are not going to move. They're going to be here for several months. Then, of course, on a particular date, if they're hungry, you, you will do your very best to, to, to purchase and deliver as much as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, but if, you, if you're then saying, OK, we, we, we're now planning for, for month three, and that there is a bit more time to think about those uh, suppliers, uh, uh, and if we are able to, to talk to a number of suppliers in the market and ensure that you know, it's cost effective and it's value for money, I, I would say that you know, if you're spending one or two percent on, say, monitoring and evaluation to ensure that the supply line is there, mm -hmm. um, that the transparency is there, that the accountability and, and affordability, the value for money is there, I would say surely that's a good thing. And does that help ameliorate donor fatigue in terms of if you go to the population of whichever territory where it's a global appeal or whatever and say to people look here is the evidence we do take care with your money we do actually check that what there's much of what you give us actually ends up in the recipients hands or mouths um, does that help generate more cash well, I, I refer to the kind of the process of, you know, approaching the donor with an ask, delivering, and then the follow-up. So the feedback, I think, is absolutely crucial. That's something that we are that working works. on. That works. Does it? People well, pay attention? Well, of course. I mean, I, th I, I mean, we would encourage people to pay more attention. I think it's sometimes our donors are a little bit too trusting. And we say to them, look, you know, actually, do you remember when we asked you for, you know, uh, a donation towards a particular response? It might have been a famine appeal, for example. And we, we said that we are providing food to the displaced communities in a particular area. This is what we've done with your money. Mm. And here is a report that you can get from the website. So we might actually use social media to say, uh, if you've donated to this appeal, for example, you can now access the report that's available on the website. Do people engage with that, though, or are they happy to give and trust you and people like you to do the right thing? Well, I think a number, I, I think, Still, we, we find that the vast majority are, are still very trusting. It might be just that they're, they're very busy and, you know, they're, they're generally very happy with Islamic relief. And I think it applies to, to, to most NGOs. Uh, but we, we are not afraid of the discussion around, you know, costs, 
about transparency. I think um, as long as it's a fair discussion, and I think sometimes you know, some of the comments about the way that charities work, and uh, you know, there are some rather sinister reports about you know, uh, the motivation for, 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 for charities functioning. I think, I think if we can get beyond that and have an open and honest discussion, and, and, and we can discuss a particular report on the way that we deliver in a particular area, we, we believe that we, we absolutely need to be answerable and accountable. But you do need to sometimes um, smooth over problems, local government problems, local official problems, and that might mean spending some of my money to make sure that truck goes out of the port and over to people in need. Well, I think that's, that's part of the accountability. Right. I think that, you know... But you'd write that down. Yeah, you know. absolutely, and, and we would say that uh, you know we, we've so much was spent on logistics. We had to shift yeah. the, the 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 aid from the port to to a, an area of displacement, and and those trucks cost money. Yeah. Um, so uh, and of course you know the, the support, the field workers, etc. Now we're constantly reviewing that, and believe me, I mean when we try and fund a proposal, there's a lot of pushback on. You know, is that person necessary? Do we really need to? Uh, is that value for money? So there's a lot of tension internally within organisations to make sure we get it right. Uh, so, uh, but we, of course, in the back of our minds is that you know, if a donor is looking at this process, would they be happy? Thank you for the moment. You're going to stay with us. This is Insight. Next, we're going to talk about the dangerous decisions, the increasing risk of being an aid worker.